What's up guys and welcome back to Wall Street Millennial. If you're new to the channel, we cover everything related to stocks and investing. One of the biggest investing stories of the past week was the parabolic move up in GameStop stock price, which many may call a short squeeze. It doubled in only one day, going from around $20 on January 13th to almost $40 on January 15th. In this video, we'll go over what exactly happened to the stock and the surprisingly large role that Wall Street Bets users played in this pump. This favorable price action left many in the financial media scratching their heads as there was no obvious catalyst to push shares higher on January 14th. The latest relevant news came on January 11th when the company announced they were appointing three new board directors with e-commerce and technology experience and committed to activist investor Ryan Cohen's vision of transforming GameStop into a video game e-commerce powerhouse. While this was big news, it was announced on January 11th, so it can't explain the pump in stock price on the 14th. If you're unfamiliar with Ryan Cohen, he is a billionaire investor and former CEO of Chewy. In November of 2020, he bought a large stake in GameStop and pushed for the company to make changes to be more competitive in the new era of e-commerce. These changes include closing underperforming brick and mortar stores as well as beefing up their e-com capabilities to compete with giants like Amazon. The market had an extremely favorable reaction to Cohen's proposed changes and the stock has almost tripled since they were announced. Another factor contributing to the volatility in GameStop stock is the high level of short interest. Over the years, the stock has performed poorly as they struggled to compete with e-commerce competitors like Amazon and digital gaming platforms like Steam. This has led to consistently declining revenue and ultimately a 90% decline in the share price from the peak in 2013 to the trough in 2020. It's pretty obvious that GameStop's traditional business model is no longer viable. Brick and mortar retail for games and consoles has fallen to online distribution platforms like Amazon, much like what happened to Blockbuster Video many years ago. As a result, GameStop's revenue has been declining precipitously over the past several years. This is even more clear when looking at the revenues and gross profit over the past 10 years. Since 2016, revenue has been decreasing, and the decrease has been accelerating since 2018. Quarterly gross profit of about a quarter billion dollars is now about one third of what it was back in 2016. This has meant steep losses in several recent quarters, with only two profitable quarters of the last eight. Because of the deteriorating secular business environment for GameStop, its stock has become potentially a huge value play, down about 91.5% from peak to trough. Over the years, many hedge funds have shorted GameStop stock, betting that the stock would continue its long march towards zero. This has caused GameStop to have one of the highest levels of short interest of any stock on the market. As of December 31st, 2020, about 68 million shares were sold short. This is more than 98% of the 69 million total shares outstanding. Even recently, there was $1.36 billion of shorted stock. It is widely believed that Sophos Capital, one of the biggest short-selling hedge funds, was short GameStop, although they recently announced that they were winding down some short positions around the same time as GameStop's spike. When a hedge fund shorts a stock, they borrow the stock from a broker and sell it on the market. The hedge fund has to buy the stock later to return it to the broker, and this is called covering the short position. If the value of the stock goes down during that time, the hedge fund makes a profit. In the case of GameStop, this has worked out quite well historically. If you had shorted GameStop in 2013, you could sell the shares for around $55. If you then waited until the pandemic lows in March, you could have covered at around $5 for a $50 or 90 plus percent profit. However, when short interest is so high, this makes the stock vulnerable to a short squeeze. A short squeeze occurs when a stock starts to jump higher. Short sellers panic and start aggressively buying more stock to cover their position in the fear that the stock will continue going up. This can be compounded by brokers forcing shorts to cover their positions so as to guarantee that they will be able to honor their commitment to return the stock. The shorts covering their position pushes the stock price even higher. This is exactly what happened to GameStop and the catalyst that initially caused the short squeeze was likely Wall Street best users pumping up the share price with the very intention of causing the short squeeze. Jim Cramer explains this on CNBC's Mad Money. The thing is, this is not a regular short squeeze. We have a ton of enthusiastic young buyers in this market. They love to get behind stocks and flood all the social media sites with recommendations. Think Wall Street Bets on Reddit, the popular online information site. Right now, if you go to those sites, and I encourage you to take a look at this, they're populated mostly by younger readers and participants who are plainly, openly plotting to blow up the shorts. In this case, by buying game stock at any price and bidding the stock up, up, and up to crush the shorts so they have to cover get it taken up. It's incredible to watch. I think they're succeeding beyond their wildest dreams. The combination of the news of Ryan Cohen's board change, which is seen as a good thing given GameStop's need for an overhaul, with massive short interest in GameStop, primed the pump for a massive short squeeze. The initial catalyst to start the short squeeze was likely pumping from the Wall Street Bets forum. 
GameStop has become a meme stock over the course of 2020, with countless DD posts talking about how GameStop will rally higher. Since the beginning of the pandemic, Google searches for GameStop stock have steadily increased and in the past week it has gone parabolic. The volume of Google searches closely matched the move in the stock price from the pandemic lows, suggesting the gains in the stock were largely driven by retail investors. Around the time the short squeeze started, GameStop was starting to build maximum hype on Wall Street bets, with users posting calls to action saying, quote, our time has come, and the short squeeze is just getting started. The barrage of GameStop hype on Wall Street bets likely caused countless Wall Street bets degenerates to start buying shares in calls of GameStop to get in on the action. This became a self-fulfilling prophecy as the initial pump caused the short squeeze and sent shares doubling in one day. The successful pump and short squeeze of GameStop has likely minted hundreds if not thousands of new millionaires on the Wall Street Best Forum. The most notable of which is user Deep Effing Value, the OG of GameStop YOLOs who has been consistently buying GameStop calls for the past year and a half. In September of 2019, he made his first post showing $53,000 worth of calls with a wide range of expertise. Since then, he has regularly posted updates on his positions so fellow Wall Street Best users can follow along with his massive YOLOs. As it turns out, this YOLO became one of the greatest successes in Wall Street Bets history, and as of January 14th, those GameStop call positions are now worth $7.3 million, a 14x gain from his original cost basis. Before we move on, if you want to get 4 free stocks from Webull, use the link in the description below and you'll get at least $21 of free stocks when you fund an account with at least $100. It's literally free money, plus you'll be supporting this channel. At the same time as the GameStop short squeeze, similar things were in the water for Bed Bath & Beyond. Back in December, less than a month ago, there was talk on Seeking Alpha and Wall Street Bets about Bed Bath & Beyond being ready for a short squeeze, citing aggressive share repurchase programs and high short interest. This could be seen in the bi-weekly short interest numbers climbing steadily throughout 2020, with 76 million shares of short interest at the end of December. Compared to about 121 million shares outstanding, that means about 63% of Bed Bath & Beyond was shorted. Over the course of January 12th through 15th, the stock climbed 46%, coinciding with a GameStop short squeeze. Some people made a lot of money off that squeeze, while other people lost a ton of money. The story of GameStop's epic comeback hammers home the power that Wall Street Bets has to influence real price action on small cap stocks. Once a stock attains meme status, there can be no telling how high it will go after being pumped by Wall Street Bets users. Another example of this is BlackBerry. Wall Street Bets has been talking about this one for several weeks now, and since the beginning of the year, it has increased by 50%. BlackBerry only has a market cap of about $5 billion, even after the rally, making it a prime stock to be influenced by retail investors buying it. While these short squeezes may not happen very often, it is important to know about them and how they work. Even if they are each too unique to trade off of for a long-term strategy, it should definitely be a factor in any investor's general investing strategy. And if you stay in tune with Wall Street Bets and this YouTube channel, you'll have a higher chance of discovering these short squeezes in the future. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. If you like the content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any thoughts on GameStop's prospects going forward, or if you think you might know what will be the next short squeeze, let us all know in the comment section below. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.